or through the facility's wiring. EMI can also travel through data cables, control signal cables, and power cables that run from the transmitter to the receiver. The same cable that conducts EMI to one device can also function as an antenna to radiate EMI to the device or to other sensitive devices. Combined radiation and conduction can create a complex EMI interaction. So again, thinking about it like that, you're really dealing with one hell of a source here. I mean, we're dealing with a monster that really, I've said this before, there's no way you're going to eliminate it totally. You're not. You're just going to make it so that it's at such a bare minimum that it will not affect your components. You can see here they have another illustration, some EMI sources in a typical shop. I've discussed this so many times, it's frightening where guys will ask me, well, what exactly creates EMI? Anything. If you're in the shop and it's electrical and you have a band saw, a scroll saw, uh, you know, anything, a drill press, if it's all in the same vicinity of your plasma table or your mill or your router, you have EMI present. Okay? The question is, are, they, are all those items grounded properly? Have you had your actual ground resistance checked? If you haven't, with a shop environment like that, you're at risk. Because again, which even if you do ground everything, which I've had many clients tell me they do, it does not mean that the grounding source has a very low resistance, which can interfere as well. We'll read that more as we go down. Everything with CNC is technical. Everything with CNC is detail driven. Okay, there is not a simple way to say, well, you're going to have perfect performance just by me, you know, covering it one time with one system. Nothing is cookie cutter. No situation is. Again, utilizing this image right here, you can see electric motors, plasma torch, laptop, arc welder. I mean, all of this stuff would be horrendous, especially if this was a small room, which many of you are in. I've dealt with guys that, you know, they're in a, a, a 10 by 15 in, a 10 by 15 foot shop and or I should say shop space. And then they'll have multiple types of electronic equipment in there and it just keeps amplifying. So, again, you buy a Chinese router already figure on the fact that it's not going to come with shielded cables. If you buy a Chinese plasma cutter and it's a low brand, low quality brand. Odds are it's not going to be shielded well on the inside either. So keep that in mind. Wherever you put that item, you're just you're just basically creating that that a nuclear bomb effect, so to speak, with the plume of, of EMI around everything. So again, placement does matter. Be realistic and think about your coordination of your shop as you're working with this equipment. Comes over here, it does say other sources uh, might include vehicle ignition systems. I mean, they're going really off here. Uh, larger, powerful magnets, electromagnets. I'm just trying to sum it up. Power line communication devices such as X10 systems. I mean, it goes on and on. But anything electrical, just keep it simple. Now, this is where it gets super interesting because, honestly, this is one of the best illustrations I've seen um, and actually only illustration I've seen where they actually discuss cutting issues related to EMI. Now, I've discussed this now for years on my channel. And again, examples of poor quality cutting possibly be due to EMI. Now, again, we know there's no way with all the variables involved with machining that we can definitively say this is, def this is definitely EMI. What we can do is do a process of elimination, which I always recommend you guys do. Once you process of eliminate, basically step by step all of the potential culprits and you still have issues nine out of ten times you're going to find it's emi okay and it's, and, it, and it's real easy to do because if you've already calibrated the machine you've already gone over everything as far as the software software seems to be working good computer seems to be working good but for some reason you're having uh, non-circular holes okay once again you've already calibrated the machine this shouldn't be an issue incomplete cuts this this is representing a plasma system here with the cuts being illustrated however I cannot emphasize this is the same type of crap you'll see with mills and routers as well okay it's cutting in general I don't care what tool you're using this is stuff to look for incomplete cuts cuts start and are misaligned Okay, very common with plasma systems. Okay, can be initiated by THC systems. I've seen that. Uh, THC systems, just to cover it real quick with plasmas, they can generate noise themselves. Uh, depending upon how most are made, depending upon how they're wired up. Again, know the animal you're working with and eliminate, eliminate these possibilities as you go. 
Where do EMI problems show up? EMI in an industrial shop mostly cause problems with electronic data and equipment such as CAD CAM computers and CNC controllers. Problems can include loss or corruption of data, restarting or locking up. Other problems can happen with wireless devices, communication systems, and broadcast-based radio or television reception. Most of you guys aren't watching TV in your shops, not like that. Um, and if you were, you wouldn't really give a damn if most of the time that was an issue when you're actually using the machines, as long as it's actually stable, of course. In electronic equipment. When EMI enters an electronic device, it can induce voltages in the electronic components, e.g. memory processors, interfaces, storage devices, etc., that can alter either the data being processed, the program doing the processing, or both. In the worst cases, such as the facility being struck by lightning, the electronic components can be completely destroyed by induced overvoltage, uh, discuss lightning protection with qualified electrical workers. Well, that's common sense, I mean, but overall, up here is where you're really looking at what EMI can do. Once it's radiated out, once a cable is not shielded or properly grounded or a table is not properly grounded, even if you're using shielded cable and the table is not properly grounded to dissipate it all, guess what? You will have penetration where your signal gets corrupted and once that happens, this is what you can see, okay? If I, if one of the first questions I always ask after the, is the machine calibrated, is are, are all the cables properly grounded and are you using the proper shielded cable? I usually get told the answer, yes, I am. And then it, as we go into more detail and I look at the chassis, show me the chassis being grounded, I never get a picture back. Or, you know, I'll get told, well, you know, I, I grounded it the best I could. Okay, I understand that. But we have to be on the same level of understanding what that actually means, okay? When you guys are dealing with plasma systems, especially as we go through these illustrations, when I tell you guys you're dealing with really heavy unseen forces, a grounding rod is the best option overall for CNC automation. Now, whether or not many of you will install them yourself, pay an electrician to do it, it's not cheap, I'm gonna tell you right now, but you'll have peace of mind. And what is that peace of mind worth when you own a production robot? If you're starting a business, it's worth a hell of a lot more than that one-time investment knowing it's done right. Because I'm telling you, once you have peace of mind with your system, it's something that really just, everything just kind of falls into place. I mean, not all the time, but 99.9% .9 of the time. So just keep that in mind. In poor quality cutting, if your system is subjected to EMI that is corrupting data or program instructions on either the computer, the CNC interface, or any associated electronic equipment, you may see it as misshaped parts, incomplete cuts, erratic cutter motion, erratic arc voltage, height control voltage readings, and torch operation, particularly repeated rising and plunging of the torch, por uh, porpoising during cuts. Uh, guys, that's your THC being basically screwed with as far as its readings because 98% of the THCs on the market now in that $300 to $1,000 price range, they're utilizing actual relays. The thing to keep in mind is that with those relays, any type of electrical interference where that voltage is being adjusted or there's a slight little wave or a jolt, you're going to find that you're going to have erratic THC movement, which again, if it's initiating a signal to your Z and it goes up and it goes down inappropriately, your cutting sucks. Okay, again, just reiterating the same points how important utilizing the proper tools are. And again, double shielded cables for plasma is mandatory. St uh, dealing with whatever type of filters we have to implement, mandatory. And of course, assembling the system with complete care. Table monitors out of sync or fighting each other. Computer or CNC interface freezing or resetting, particularly during torch arc startup. Well, that's common sense, guys, because you're pulling the most power when that happens. I've said that numerous times. Erratic, unsteady voltage readings on the height control display. A lot of guys will tell me they're, they're doing calibration on their plasma, and the THC is, it's just all of a sudden out of calibration, or it's worked good for an hour, now it's out of calibration, excuse me, it's worked for an hour, now it's out of calibration. That is typically due to that. I would tell you to go over everything, make sure everything is properly grounded, okay? Now, computer freezing or blue screen in depth, I've never seen that myself. I'm not saying it can't happen. I mean, that would be an extreme case. But if you put your computer close enough, anything is possible. So, I mean, it's no different than if you put a magnet close to your monitor. You're going to have issues. So just keep that in mind. Always, always think in them regards as far as what we're doing with computers. I've said that before. Computers are not designed to be in a hot shop environment, a humid shop environment. Use common sense. You want to build the shop 
as clean and as efficient and cool as possible, especially for the computer aspect. Steps to reduce EMI effects. Steps to reduce EMI can be categorized, categorized into several main groups and the usual troubleshooting techniques would apply for each group, including testing, the lowest cost, easiest to implement solutions first. This is not a detailed discussion and you should consult with a qualified electrician before undertaking any modifications. Distance. If the EMI is coming from within an electrical device as opposed to from the cables, then locating the source at a greater distance from other components will reduce EMI. If the EMI is being transmitted or received by the cables acting as an antenna, then decreasing the cable length will reduce the EMI. Again, this is something that's really logical. I really don't discuss it much, but the longer your cable is naturally, if it's an antenna, the shorter it is, the, the less reception you'll have. So again, you're going to definitely have a decrease in EMI or RFI. Common sense, guys, especially when you're building a controller. One of the things about the G540 system, many guys, I don't even know if they realize it, but I've kept the wire runs as short as possible. I mean, even the power runs, the whole box is only 12 inches long. Power runs are, are probably no longer than 13 inches, but the way I have it set up and the way everything is actually routed, it we have very few bends as far as anything going to the signals and the drive itself only has about a four inch lead going to the actual power supply. If you review other chassis builds from other vendors, you'll see the power supply is usually mounted horizontally. Mine is mounted vertically in the chassis for that reason. These details all play a role. You know what I'm saying? Anything you can do to eliminate that as far as di uh, distance wise, do it. If you're, if you're building an individual drive system, keep them leads going to the drives as short as humanly possible. That will reduce a lot of signal interference right there. Um, again, real simple, makes a big difference. Cable routing. Cables, cables trade EMI crosstalk more easily when they touch or are close. Uh, cross each other at shallow angles or a coil together. Routing cables away from each other reduces EMI. Common sense. A firm effective work clamp connection reduces arcing in EMI. Metal boxes surrounding circuit boards and shielded cables prevent EMI from being transmitted or received when the box or shield is connected to the signal ground or earth ground. A separate earth ground may be helpful in dissipating EMI from shielded wires and equipment. Uh, it's absolutely helpful and it's mandatory, guys. You definitely want to make sure that your metal boxes are grounded. If you're having a controller-based system where you're going to have your chassis, and most guys with plasmas, they'll have their chassis, and then they're deciding where they want to mount the actual controller itself. If you mount it right under the table, first of all, your distance is going to be so small that you're basically putting as much of that EMI around that system as possible. We don't want to do that. Give yourself six to 10 feet, that's fine. Um, I know cost goes up because you're gonna have to have longer cables, but it's logical and it will help. As far as the grounding procedure, every item should be grounded centrally to a star point ground. Okay, we'll cover that as we go through, but again, everything should be centralized with grounding. Install an earth ground rod and bond tables to it. You can see exactly what they're doing here. Increase distance to EMI source, route cables away from other cables and avoid coiling. Add power line and motor cables, uh, filters and ferrite chokes, okay? A lot of manufacturers don't even discuss that and they're cheap as hell. Add them. I mean, you buy them and they do make a huge difference, especially in this application. That's why I started using them with my systems because again, it's, it's just logical. It's very simple to do. And once you implement them, you, you have peace of mind for a passive filter. It works exceptionally, okay? Uh, various steps may be taken to reduce the amine. Of course, they're just going over the illustration. Um, filtering. Uh, let's see here. Ferrite donuts and chokes are passive filters uh, that are often effective in reducing EMI from signal power cables. If EMI entering through the power lines, isolating equipment on its own electrical circuit and employing an inverter-based battery backup, an uninterruptible power supply UPS can reduce EMI. Now, if you guys are in a commercial environment and you're producing components for profit, you're going to, at one point or another, want to use a power backup system. Now, plasma systems, we know, are going to need a generator of some sort um, in order to do that. So, realistically, 
how much of a battery backup you're going to use with a plasma system is really uh, up to the end user. And even with a mill or a router, again, it'll be something you'll have to look at. But what they're saying is true. If you're willing to, to go that route, uh, a UPS power backup will reduce EMI because your line will actually have an uninterruptible power supply. So again, just something to think about whether or not you want to implement it. Like I said, this is a pretty well-written document as far as 